Hey, I promise this was free, but I want to show you guys this upgrade that, that we got for free. The executive suite. Living area, a little my kitchen net. Some different types of coffee, an espresso. Oh, that coffee machine, different. Flat screen, check out the views over here. On my way. Got views of uh, Nashville. Very, very nice. I rock with it. And we got the bedroom, another flat screen. Okay, okay, okay. Very, very nice. I rock with it. This is our second suite we got this year for free. It pays to, uh, to stick with a, a brand, a, ho a certain hotel brand. They gave us a gift bag. Right. So literally using points, using strategies, using the Hyatt and Chase Ultimate Rewards program. This is how we get these hotels for free. Not doing anything we wouldn't do like our regular spend, just spending it a certain way. So pay our bills a specific way, transfer partners. You gotta know the, the right transfer partners to make your points go the furthest. What do you think this is, babe? What the hell? Oh, truffle. Oh, it's a stress. <laughs> oh yeah. Thank Hyatt you pen. for your loyalty to the higher brand. We appreciate you. Handwritten letter. Sick. Hey man. Does it, does it hit better, differently because it was handwritten? It does hit different when it's handwritten. This is one of our favorite hotels out here. So we tend to stick with Hyatt because we have a globalist tier. We've hit that tier. We get free room upgrades. So I'm looking crazy, and me and my wife, we're about, we about to go out to dinner in Nashville. I wanted a haircut, I remember my clippers on Instagram, I asked real quick, yo, who can give me a haircut? And uh, somebody pulled through and was like, bro, I got you. Come through in like an hour and a half. But I'm on my way right now. I will show you guys the shop, who it is, give them, show them some love. I don't know what kind of video we'll make out of it, but you'll be able to see it before. I'll show you guys that after. Uh, we're here, it looks like he's in like some salon, like a studio. Professionals with high standards. There's a guy right here looking out for your boy. What's up, man? What was your name again? I met you at CT. Uh, Cameo. Cameo, cool. Yes, yeah, I met him at CT, man. It's crazy how things come full circle, man. He's about to help your boy out. Yeah, Nashville traffic is different, bro. It's like the roads were not built for the, for how busy it is here. Boy, I'm right. I'm back to life, man. Back to life. Thank you, man. I really appreciate it. Young guy, shout out to him for, for, for blessing me last minute like that. And he was asking me a lot of questions, man. And we were chopping it up and, you know, just kind of talking family, just talking life and business and all that good stuff, man. I just want to tell you guys, bro, like, don't fear nothing. You shouldn't fear anything, bro. You know, God has a plan for you. Not to get too spiritual or into faith and stuff, but listen, you can only question so much and be so prepared. You just got to go do stuff, man. Go do it. Whatever it is that you want to do, man, whether it's the right thing or not, it will fall into place. It will fall into your purpose as long as you're moving with the right intent. And so if you're young and you're figuring out this thing of life, man, it's very complex. I don't think anybody's ever mastered it. But one of the most important things I would tell everybody, always be pushing, always be getting better, always be learning. Have gratitude for everything you got, man, because you got a lot more than a lot of people. I don't care what situation you're in, especially if you live here in the States. Stop playing. All right. So with that being said, man, to all my young entrepreneurs, man, there ain't nothing you can't do. Me and you are no different besides I just did some shit. I've, I've been doing this probably longer than a lot of you guys. But if you look at my first videos, my first YouTube videos, man, you'll see I was figuring it out just like everybody else, man. And there's so much information out there that you guys could leverage and utilize. But get out there and, and be dangerous, man. Whatever people tell you you can't do, bro, is bullshit. Go do it. I just wanted to touch on that, man. Thanks again, Cam. This is a restaurant, it's called The Standard. It looks like this used to be The Standard. You guys can see right there, it says it. The staircase, we walk in. Straight up an old house. Chandelier. The staircase is crazy. Bought the jerk. Okay. Yeah? Uh, yeah, that's fine. This is where they have people wait. This is gorgeous, man. No tables. It's way bigger in person, guys. Like, that's how it looks as big as hell. Little dining areas. This house is huge. Like, it's deceiving how huge it is. All right, he is watching me. But that's all right. Don't watch me eat. It's <laughs> amazing. Cut of steak. My wife's sea bass. Oh my gosh. That's definitely make it look better. Oh my gosh, makes it so much better. It's the, the rooftop bar that's at this hotel. It's really, really nice. This is why I love this hotel. 
This is why I like the top. The rooftop vibes. It's nice, man. Yeah. Guys, look how cool this is. You got a whole bunch of cameras. You just come in, you scan your car. All these cameras just watch you pretty much, what you're grabbing, and it knows on your way out what's supposed to charge you for. Incredible. People make fun of Amazon for not being profitable. The reason why Amazon is not profitable is because they spend all their money on this right here. All right, so I came to the warehouse on a freaking Saturday to pick up a new product, a new item. Let me show you. This we've been working on for a little while because couldn't get the consistency right on the pencil beam was testing, he tested a whole bunch of different pencils. He was just trying to find the, the right consistency. The, you know, when you apply a pencil, it could be too stiff. The pencil could, maybe it might not come come off of uh, the pencil easy enough, or maybe too much of it comes off. And then sometimes it's too smudgy, right? Like that consistency is super important. So Beam finally got the consistency that he wanted correct. And Dre, this was Dre's project. So Dre's not managing projects. He went from being my client to, well, becoming my friend, and becoming a barber, a manager at the shops, and you know now running things at the warehouse, running things at the hair shows, and now he's um, putting together products from start to finish. He's running with projects. So this was a small project. It was the pencils. It's not like what Danny does as far as as far as an engineer, where he does something like the you know the freaking wireless charging mats and the Beam Team XL. Like those are huge projects. You know he's growing into it. So let's see where Dre goes from here like how he evolves his uh product project management all right you guys here they are so they come with three pencils okay three pencils two sharpeners let's open one up shout out to my guy samer the amazing art and here's the pencil they're double-sided you got your nude you got the white pencil so the reason why i like this is because you don't have to have you know two pencils on your station you got one pencil two sharpeners you got both sides nude and the white so super diverse only one pencil needed at your station now and two amazing uh, sharpeners at the ends these are high quality these are the consistency like i told you guys that beam likes some good high quality pencil sharpeners so essentially you're getting six pencils six half pencils essentially if you think about it they're on the website right now if you want them go cop them and uh, let's sell about a hundred thousand of these and congrats to dre for putting this together man this was his project did a great job man he did really really good now we just gotta make sure these things sell the new 245 precision pencil so first things first obviously like i showed you guys you gotta sharpen the pencil i would say get it to a nice fine point if you want it to be easier and more precise but the key is to make sure that you get either that nude or that white color on the person's skin right around the hairline. Now, the lighter the skin, the lighter the color you wanna go with the uh, precision pencils. The idea here with the precision pencils was to declutter a little bit, not having a whole bunch of pencils and stuff all, all over your station. One pencil, two sharpeners, I just feel like that's more efficient. And although it's not that that big of a deal, if you're just looking at it from the pencil's perspective, but when you start adding efficiencies, like the pencil, like this, like having less uh, stuff clutter on your station, all of that adds up to a much more efficient environment. And so I think half the battle is making sure that your environment and your workspace is a platform for efficiency. On this particular client, Chastity, I chose white color, the white side, because her skin is very light. We applied the pencil, the C cup, and to the vertical bars, and then we followed it up with the trimmers. We use the trimmers first to try to make it look more like an ash as opposed to just a straight white line. If you don't use the trimmers first, it's going to look crazy. You know, no offense to the island boys, but they, they won't be doing it right. You know what I mean? So once you, you've done that, you can follow it up with the razor to really get it you know, to, to pop and have that ash, that natural ash look, perception, right? What I did in this case, usually I do the enhancement first, but what I did in this case, what I, I applied, applied the enhancement after with the clutch card, the 245 clutch card. And I felt like that gave like an added layer of protection so that it doesn't kind of spill over and stain the skin because it would be going over the ash a little bit. So I could be wrong, it could be overrated, but either way, whether you apply the color first or after, completely up to you. And I would say this too, another thing I think is overrated is whether or not you use natural ash or you use the color pencil. Who cares? This is about efficiencies and creating the same look. Whether you're using somebody's dry skin to create an ash effect or you're using a colored pencil, why does it matter? 
to me, it's just a feeling. It's just arguing over feelings, arguing over ego, and that doesn't help anybody. So I think that the pencil creates an efficiency here. We don't have to put alcohol and, and spritz and, and then use the blow dryer or shampoo the, the skin to make sure it's dry. You know, that ash is gonna come off anyways. It is a enhancement, whether it's somebody's dry skin or it is a pencil. That's how I feel about it. Don't argue with me, argue with somebody else. I will see you guys on the next video.